The Wilpod scope widget can be used to handle the back navigation on Android and we also will look at how we can do the same thing for iOS. And what you see here right now is a dialog and this should every time pop up if we press the back button on Android and if we go here on iOS and click here on this go back then it should also pop up and say okay please save first of all and then you can do the changes and we build here a username and if you forgot to save then you get this pop-up saying please save and if you didn't forget to save then you will land up here back at this page and your new username is saved here. To get started I have already created here this first page, this home page, where we later put our username inside because we want to handle the second page, the edit page and this is every time if you click here on this button that we land here up at this edit page. First of all we want to create here this text field in this adding user page and then we want to later handle the back button. In our build method we start here with the container and some padding and then we have a column where we now want to show first of all the text field and then the button save. So we create here a new method build username and inside of this method we create here this text field and each text field needs to have a controller so we go here to the top and create this controller and we also call here this initialize method and then we want to get here the user. I'm using here the provider package and basically what the provider package allows you to that you get the user and it is saved globally in the whole app and after we get this user property we want to create and initialize our controller so I put here this controller to a new text editing controller and this user here has a property which is called username and we want simply to put our username here inside and if it is now, then we want to put empty username into our text editing controller. Then we also need to call here the dispose method and inside of the dispose method we put first of all here this controller dispose inside to clean up everything. Now we want to add here some decoration for our text field because the text field doesn't look so great right now. It's just a line and then we have to type something. So I will put here this outline input border inside and then it looks like this. I think this is cooler and I also made it here rounded. Then I put here this label text inside so every time we have here the username and if we select this then the username is here at the top. Then we can also set here hint text so every time it is empty we have here this hint text and if we write here something then it is not showing anymore. And we also add here fill color, so I want to change it here to the white color inside. And that's it, we have now this text field. Back in our build method, we want to place under our username the button. So first of all, I add here some space, and then we add here this race button, save. And we also have here an unpressed handler, where we later want to save the user. All right, now we have implemented this design and now we can add the functionality that we handle the back button. To access the back button we simply wrap here our scaffold around with a will pop scope and inside of it we have a property which is called on will pop and we will handle it in a different method and inside of this method we return here boolean and a future and we make it async and now we actually want first of all to show this pop up and therefore we call here this dialog function show dialog and inside of it we need to add a builder to build the dialog and then we want to add here this alert dialog which is from the flutter sdk and here inside you can put first of all a title then you can add like a subtitle somehow and also some actions and the actions are basically the buttons which the user can press later so first of all I add here this no button and if it is clicked no then we want to call here navigator of context pop and then we put your false inside and then we also add a second button with yes and in this one we want to add also the navigator of pop and this time with a value of true. And we put these both values here inside because depending on what value we put here inside it will then be here returned later to our should pop and this will then return here at the end of our method 
And if the case is that the user has nothing selected, then we want to add here the false case so that he has selected no and he will stay at the screen. And if you select the yes button, then he will go back without saving his username. And this false value or true value will then go here inside of our will pop scope. And basically the will pop scope will handle it. So if we return here in our method a false, then it will not pop this screen. And if we put here a true inside, then it will pop the screen and go back to the previous screen. And now we can try this feature out. So if I'm now pressing here on the edit user page on the back button, then this dialog will pop up, which we have defined here. And it also shows here the text, like you can see the title and the content, which is the subtitle. And then we have here two buttons. And if we press yes, then he will go back and leave this page without saving. And if we have no pressed, then he will not go back and stay here inside. So let's try this out. So I press here no, he will stay inside. And if I go here and press yes, he will go back and go to the previous screen. And the same thing is also working for this back button. So here, if you click on back, then it is also popping up and also this dialog will show and then you can select yes or no. And by the way, if you want to get the source code, you can get it with the first link in the description box. And with the second link, you get my Flutter course, where I teach you how to become a better Flutter developer. And now we want to add here this save button. And therefore we go here to the save user method, which is wired up with our button. So every time we press on this button, this method is called. And here inside, first of all, we want to get our user data. and we want then to access our user name and want to override it. And this is what we do here with the provider package. Right now, I don't want to get much more detailed about the provider package, but basically what we are doing here is to put a new value into our user global state, into our username. And we simply want to put here our controller.txt, our value of this input field there inside. And this is then globally saved and then also other pages can access this variable. And after we have clicked here on save and have saved this value, we also want to go back to the previous page. So we call here the navigator of context and pop the current page from the stack. And now we are here at the end. So we have completed the app. So if I go here and press and let's type something, hello world. And now if I go here and click on this button, then you see this pop up. Do you want to leave without saving? If you press no, then he will stay at the screen. And uh, if you press yes, then he will not change here this username. However, if you go here back and let's type another one, hello world two. And this time I click here on back. Do you want to leave without saving? No. And then you click here on save and then this username is saved. Hello everyone, thank you so much for watching this video. Please make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel here to get the latest news about Flutter. And see you soon, bye.